This useless piece of junk is a trap bar. I know that's a rather harsh statement, but I see no point in it. And the only reason we're even talking about it today is because recently the United States military has decided to adopt this device as part of their brand new, uh, so much better thought out version of the physical fitness testing that they do for various types of uh, applications in the military. And uh, this is being called a deadlift, all right? This is a trap bar. It is not a barbell, and to perform a deadlift, you have to have a barbell. Now, there are several things about this device that make uh, this not a deadlift. It makes the movement so dissimilar that there's not really any reason to call it a deadlift because it's not nearly as useful, and in fact, there are several aspects of it that when used as an actual strength training device with heavy weight makes this a rather dangerous and unstable thing to do. Let's first talk about the primary feature of the trap bar here, which is the absence of a central shaft. You stand in the middle of this, grab the handles, which are a fixed distance apart, and pull it up. Now, a deadlift limits movement in the sagittal plane, and just to briefly uh, revamp our terminology here. This is the horizontal plane. This is the frontal plane. And this is the sagittal plane, X, Y, Z, that sort of thing. So the sagittal plane is the one that operates forward and back. A barbell limits movement as it's pulled up the legs in the sagittal plane because the barbell is pulled up in contact with the shins and the thighs. And especially at lockout, a barbell is locked onto the front of your thighs by the fact that your body's mass is behind the bar, leaning back, locking the barbell into a stable position against contact with the thighs in front. It's a stable lockout. It's been stable all the way up without any freedom to move in the sagittal plane because the bar contact with the legs limits that. A trap bar completely removes that limitation. A trap bar can swing anywhere it wants to in the sagittal plane. It can swing on the way up, and most importantly, it can swing at the top in lockout. Now I'll stop at the top here. And now I want you to, I want to show you the sagittal instability. See this swing? It's only 135, so it's not a big deal. If 405 was on the bar, that's not necessarily a wonderful thing to have happen. Now, this permits the, the thing that lots and lots of people like about the trap bar. It permits a more vertical back angle, because if you'll notice, that when the barbell comes up off the floor over the middle of the foot, the forward position of the knees and the shins are limited by the position of the bar over the middle of the foot. This limits the position that the hips can also occupy, which also dictates the back angle. We want to pull with a more horizontal back angle because we want to train the back. We want the back to be stressed and loaded during a pull. A squat is the exercise we use that has degrees of freedom in the sagittal plane. And even then, we have to limit those so that we carefully load the hamstrings to the best of their ability to be contributors to the movement that we're trying to perform in the squat. But if we wanted to pull a barbell off the floor like a squat, we were already squatting. We're already squatting. We want the pull to be different. Note the wild amount of variation that is available to the lifter with a trap bar deadlift. All right, hips can, can be virtually in any position you want them to be. And this produces a highly irreproducible movement pattern. The thing can do anything it wants to do from rep to rep. There's no uniformity. 
Do one with a real high hip position that will actually look like a deadlift. You can do anything you want to do with a trap bar. This is not necessarily a good thing because reproducibility of effort results in accuracy and precision. This is extremely limited by the trap bar. You can squat all the way down and pull this thing off the ground with an almost vertical back angle, like a front squat almost, certainly like a high bar squat. And people that like that don't seem to understand that a horizontal back angle is a feature of training effectively with barbells. It's not a bug. We want a more horizontal back angle because we want the back loaded because we want to strengthen the damn thing. The back is not fragile. The back strengthens just like everything else. And when you pull a trap bar off the floor, pulling it off the floor with knees forward and hips low, if you want to do that, just squat that way. But we want the stability provided by the barbell riding up the shins, up the thighs, and locking out at the top in a stable position against the thighs. We want that stability because it, believe it or not, it is possible to fall down with the deadlift. If you don't believe that, then ask USAPL why they have some guy standing behind you at a meet nowadays spotting you on the deadlift. Obviously, there is enough instability in the barbell exercise that is the deadlift that we don't need to amplify the instability by using a piece of equipment that is inherently unrestricted in the sagittal plane. So that's the first problem. Now, the second problem with the trap bar deadlift is the grip situation. The grip in a trap bar deadlift is fixed by the equipment. The grip width on a deadlift is determined by you. You can tailor your grip to generate completely vertical arms. And vertical arms reduce the range of motion of the pull and therefore allow you to make up for that efficient range of motion reduction by lifting heavier weights. Heavier weights is why we're here. We're training for strength. Strength is more weight on the bar. Strength is force production. That's all it is. The more weight you pull, the stronger you are. You can pull more weight with a barbell than you can with a trap bar. And there'll be people argue with that. And the people that'll argue with that are the ones that have not really trained the barbell deadlift to its full potential. The barbell deadlift is a better exercise. Grip width on a trap bar is fixed by the equipment and the carrying angle, which is the angle out from the sides between the hands and the body here that you normally see in a supine hand position like this, the carrying angle is exaggerated on a trap bar. Also, instability along the axis of the load. Move your hands like we see this. This can be a factor if the grip is not actually taken correctly because there is a 12 inch moment of inertia between the axis of that load and the front of this frame. It's inherently unstable. Set it down. As soon as you pull that thing, yeah, it just yeah. Has to go. because it, it's still weight hanging from your arms and it still obeys the law. Yeah, yeah. But there's no way to, the absence of a bar telling you where that weight is creates all that instability. With a barbell, it can be nice and tight and narrow. This allows your efficient stance to be nice and tight and narrow. And everything is improved by this position. This coupled with the fact that the trap bar features sagittal instability makes it a less useful piece of equipment, in my opinion. Now, if the Army wants to buy a whole bunch of these on a big giant contract with somebody, Fine, everybody's got to eat. But when you train, this piece of equipment is extremely optional. The deadlift is a better exercise, and I recommend you stick with that. Thanks for watching.